Hello friends, this is Miro and welcome back to my channel. It's been a month since I uploaded a video, it seems. I could come up with many excuses for that. I was abducted by aliens. My neighbor's dog ate my camera. I actually live in an alternate universe where it only has been a day, but for you it's been a month. I think I'm gonna go with the one where I was abducted by aliens and I met Fox Mulder. Cool guy. Very cool. And for all of you who pretend you don't know X-Files, oh, I know my demographics, you are not that young. Did I age shame everyone now? This is my third time recording this video and first time things got out of focus and also got very excited, so in places you can't really understand what I'm saying because I'm so excited. Then I decided it would perhaps be best if I recorded myself potting all these cuttings and I had my camera recording me and my phone recording the repotting and despite two devices recording me, I somehow managed to get things out of frame. Honestly, it must be some type of a superpower at this point to get things out of frame with two cameras. Also, things were out of focus and I think now we got all the settings right and things should be in focus, but today I'm just going to show you all the Hoyas that I got. As you can see from the title, this is going to be a massive Hoya haul, and I'm not joking, it's massive. The, the haul, the Hoya haul. I got about 39 cuttings, and actually a bit more, because I have a bag here of 10 Hoya cuttings that are rooting in nothing. There, I just sprayed some water in there, and I can see some roots happening. I was gonna take care of this and put them in perlite. I didn't clearly so they will go they will go in perlite i will take care of that i got hoyas from several different places most of them are from sweden i have about 26 hoyas from sweden i got some from croatia some were gifts for my birthday some were through a trade i will show you all of them i think there is one hoya that you did not expect me to get and honestly i did not expect myself to get but i traded a Hoya for this one, so it's fine. Anyways, enough of the rambling. I promise you there will be more rambling at the end of the video and probably throughout because I tend to ramble a lot. First, we will start with Hoyas from Sweden. I got them from Carolina, who is my friend, and from Camilla, who is the chairwoman of the Swedish Hoya Society. You can contact both of them. Carolina is Freehetti and Ask on Instagram, and she also sells on Tradera. And Camilla, you can find Camilla on Facebook, and you can also find Camilla on Instagram and ask what Hoyas she has to sell to you. These will be in no particular order because any semblance of the order that's just out of the window. I will just show you what I have and after I show you all the Hoyas I will explain why I have been gone. First we will start with Hoyas from Carolina. The first one I will show you is Hoya Loki. I have a list here so I know which one I need to find. They're everywhere. So we need to find Loki. Here it is. So this is Hoya Loki from Carolina. It does have one yellow leaf here. I'm not going to remove it yet. I am waiting for this leaf to fall off by itself. There was some yellowing out of the box and that's just because it took some time to arrive to me and then also I was rooting it in a way in which I've never really rooted a Hoya. And I placed it in this cup with cocoa peat and perlite and basically it rooted itself like that. I did not put a bag on top of it or anything and as you can see it did root. You can see some roots there. So it is slowly hydrating itself again. I cannot wait for it to bloom. Hoya Loki is supposed to be very easy to bloom early on so I'm looking forward to that and you know this yellow leaf that will go away and it will push out new growth. Overall it is looking great and I can say it's not the easiest Hoya to root, so if you can get it already rooted, that's my recommendation. If you cannot, it's going to be fine. Not impossible to root, I just, you know, I, I was a bit scared throughout the process that it would not make it. But it did. No special conditions. I do have to say that I did put it on a heat mat and I made sure that it is watered all the time. Actually, this cup, it does not have drainage. 
so you know it can keep the moisture longer and my humidity is also around 60 percent so you know i was not trying to root this in 20 percent humidity the next toy that i got is hoya croniana with black leaves this is how that hoya looks like you can see the leaves are a bit darker they are not really black in real life they are more of a dark green i do have another hoya from camilla that is very similar to this one but it's not a croniana it's lacunosa i got it as a gift and to me that one has darker leaves in real life we will talk about that a bit later so i'm gonna just hold on to this guy i placed it on the bed Oftentimes my plants end up in my bed. Let's move on. The next Hoya is my absolute favorite. I tried getting this Hoya last year, and if you remember that video, it is in 40 days of shipping. I ordered it from Russia, but things got stuck in customs there, and then it took 40 days to arrive. Unfortunately, that Hoya didn't make it, but Carolina was sweet enough to send me a very generous cutting. It's honestly one of my favorites, if not the favorite Hoya at the moment. This is variegated Hoya Heuschkeliana, and you can see it is a quite a big cutting. It's rooted very easily in water. It actually has some baby leaves there that I'm waiting to pop up. Very easy to root. I actually have some new growth already. You can see there, that's new growth. I love it. I cannot wait for this one to get big. Thank you so much, Carolina. This is honestly one of my favorites. I also have another Hoya from Carolina that is Hoya Finlaysoni. It is Hoya Finlaysoni Nova. As you know, from my 30 days of Hoya, I already have Hoya Finlaysoni, and that one is supposed to bloom very soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It's not the best grower, it's very slow. It's also very different from different Hoya Finley Sonys. It has pubescent leaves, again, very slow growth. So I talked with Carolina a bit and she told me there are clones of Hoya Finley Sony that grow faster and bloom early on. So I decided to get Hoya Finley Sony Nova. Now, what I didn't know is that my friend is going to send me a Hoya Finley Sony Nova for my birthday that looks completely different than the one that Carolina sent me. I will show the one for my friend later, so just remember this one for that moment. This Hoya is the one that I got from Carolina as Hoya Finley Sony Nova. I hope you can see there it actually has... See, I was trying to avoid that. It actually has two leaves and yep, the camera will focus. It is in semi-hydro, it's rooted in water. I potted it in a net pot and we can see there are some roots there. The reason why I have rocks on top is because it keeps the moisture in the pot. Sometimes the top layer of lacquer will dry out faster than the bottom and it will desiccate the roots that are towards the top. It happens with orchids a lot, and it did happen to me with my Hoya Imperialis. The roots on the bottom were fine, the roots on the top were dry, and when I would water, those would rot, but the ones in the bottom were, were okay. So to avoid that, you can just place some rocks, non-wicking rocks on top, and it will keep the moisture in the pot, the lacquer will stay moist, and also if you have something, any plant that you think might rot, you can put rocks towards the top and anything that's in the rocks shouldn't really rot. So if you're just worried, maybe if you want to put a peperomia in semi-hydro, which I did, and they love it, if you put more rocks around the stem and if only the roots are touching the lacca, the plant will be fine, it will not rot. And I can see here that there is a whisper of a new growth. I'm not sure if you can see on camera. I think you should be able to see that. So this one is gonna take off really soon. This next Hoya is also another Hoya that I got from Russia last year and it did not make in 40 days of shipping. When I unboxed it, it looked fine, but in a day it started to lose the leaves and I think by day three it lost all of the leaves. It was just too much for it, so it didn't really make it. But, you know, there is always the next time, so I had to order it again from Carolina. And it is Hoya 
Kanya Kumariana. It is very cute. I have to say, I really love the shape of the leaves. There are two cuttings. She was nice enough to send me a bigger one and a smaller one, and they're doing well. I don't really see any new growth, but I did unpot it because I was curious and the roots are growing. This one actually arrived with a bit of roots, so I potted it in the pot straight away. Okay, remember how I said that I'm not gonna get big leaf Hoyas anymore? I lied. This is another Hoya from Carolina. This is Hoya Glabra Ulu Apin Apin, and I cannot see what's happening. I literally can't see. It has this one big leaf. It arrived with a bit of roots, and it had new growth, but it died back, probably due to shipping, but I can see that it's pushing out another new growth here and if my camera will focus so you can see there is another one which is fantastic it only took a couple of weeks to start pushing out new growth and it is doing really well i can see some roots on the bottom i'm not sure if you can see i don't know if this is the biggest that the leaf will get hopefully that's it hopefully they don't get any bigger because they honestly have no space now, back to small-leaved Hoyas. Isn't that super cute? This is Hoya Carmele. It's very tiny. Some people say it looks like Hoya Serpents. To me, in person, it doesn't really look like Hoya Serpents, but I can see why some people would think it does. There is small new growth here, which you will not be able to see on camera. It's simply too small. And there is actually new growth here on the top. Maybe that will be visible. I don't know if you can see, there is a whisper. There is a whisper. This next toy I honestly did not think I would like as much as I do. I don't like the non-variegated version very much, so I didn't think I would like the variegated version, but I do. It is Hoa Kentiana variegated, and I know there is a lot of debate now whether this is Kentiana or Wayeti. I'm gonna keep calling it Kentiana until I see it bloom. Supposedly there is no variegated Kentiana. To me, honestly, I always thought Kentiana and Wayeti look very similar, but no one's asking me. So I'm gonna keep the tag until it blooms, and then I'm probably gonna sw switch the tag. Once again, I'm just trying not to... Harder than I... Oh, there you go, you can... Why is gravity a thing? I'm just trying to hold all the rocks in and at the same time show you the plant. So this is variegated Hoya Kentiana. We will probably need to move to B-roll for this one. It's doing really well. It did t take longer to root than the rest of them, but it did root only in distilled water and algamic, and I potted it in semi-hydro because it did not have great luck with Hoya Wayeti. I tried Hoya Wayeti in organic mixes, and for some reason it always starts to rot for me. It's either that I am watering it too much or I'm not watering it enough, and then the roots die back, and the next time I water, they start to rot. Whatever the issue is, I've had enough. I put Hoya Wayeti in semi-hydro and it's doing great. No issues whatsoever, easy peasy. So I decided, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this one in semi-hydro because I know it works. You're probably able to grow Hoya Wayeti in organic mix. I'm sure you are. For me, for some reason, it was very difficult. There are some more challenging Hoyas like Hoya Undulata and I never had any issues with that. But for some reason, Hoya Wayeti, no, it doesn't like me. The next Hoya is another one that took a little bit longer to root. It probably would have been best if I just placed it on top of the potting mix and pinned it down right away, and I think that would just make the rooting process faster. Instead, I tried to root it in water, and, you know, eventually it did. Anyways, it is Hoya Minutiflora. It is another small-leaved Hoya. I did pin it down in the end so it can root in several places and i already checked the roots are growing slowly it could be just the case that this hoya is generally slower with producing roots but so far it looks good hopefully everything will be fine when i pin them down like this i just make sure to spray the top of the potting mix i don't really water them because there is no need for you to water the Hoya, you know, they, they're not gonna go down and get moisture from that. It just needs to stay moist towards the top. 
Another Hoya I got from Carolina is also a small leaved Hoya. I love it because it already started to grow. It's such a good little Hoya and it has very beautiful leaves. I'm not sure if you can see, it kind of has a reddish margin on the leaf. And this is new vine, new growth. So this is the original vine and then all of this is new growth. And this one is Hoya Microstemma. I got it out so you can see it a bit better. It is a very, very cute Hoya. Also, I have to say, even though the leaves are green, I love the shape of the leaf and I love the margin. Honestly, I think this has the potential to also become one of my favorites. And the last Hoya that I purchased from Carolina, but not the last one that she sent me, is Hoya Lee. L-Y-I. I think it's pronounced Lee. I heard people pronounce it Lie, but I'm not sure that's the correct pronunciation. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. I think it's Lee. People can think differently. I asked some other people in Sweden, they say it's Li. We, we, we don't need to know. No one needs, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not a big of a deal. We have bigger issues, I think, in the world than how to pronounce a Hoya name correctly. This one also did not arrive rooted, so I rooted it in distilled water. Very easy to root. It has pubescent leaves and it really reminds me of Hoya Thomsoni. I do hope it grows faster than Hoya Thomsoni. Hoya Thomsoni hasn't been the fastest nor the slowest growing Hoya for me. It tried to bloom several times, but it didn't yet. So I hope that Hoya Lee is less of a challenge. I do think there is a peduncle there, so it's a jump start for Miro. It doesn't mean that it will bloom from that peduncle, but let's hope it does, because I would love to see the flowers on it. This Hoya is my first gift from Carolina, and it is Hoya species Fraser Hills. It is supposed to be a Lacunosa type Hoya, and you can clearly see that from the leaves. It does have really wonderful leaves. A bit of sun stress there, and it looks very, very nice. Very easy Hoya to root. I'm not sure how well it grows or how early it will bloom. I have not heard the best things about this Hoya, but I hope it's easy peasy to grow because I think it looks very cute. This next one is also another gift from Carolina, and I actually wanted to purchase it, but it was too small, so she decided to just gift it to me. It gave me anxiety, I'm not going to lie to you. I was very stressed out because part of it was broken off and I thought maybe it would survive, but it yellowed. So the small cutting got even smaller and you know, I was just super worried. It didn't look good, but then it started to push out new growth and it's actually looking pretty fine now. And I would say twice the size from when it arrived and it only arrived three or four weeks ago. This is the Hoya that I'm talking about. I'm not sure if you can see, it's super tiny. It is Hoya Lithophytica. You can see there how it looks. All of this is new growth. So at one point we were left with three leaves, but it pushed out this new vine and it's continuing to grow. So I hope it does well. I heard that once it starts to grow, it grows really well, but getting it to start to grow is a bit difficult. I'm gonna say it honestly, I was really, really worried that it will just die. It didn't, so thank you for growing. It doesn't look like Hoya <laughs> when, when it's this size, but trust me, it is. And when it blooms, it makes really, really cute blooms. So, Hoya Lutophytica. We are now going to move into Hoyas that I got from Camilla, and the first one is Hoya Species Affinity Blasherna Ezi Golden Flame. And it is this one. It already got a trellis. It's a bit, it was a bit awkward to pot. It's a very nice cutting, but you know, sometimes Hoya cuttings can be awkward to pot. Let's not lie to ourselves. And this this one is one of those that was a bit awkward. However, it was super easy to root in distilled water and you can see here, it's already pushing out new growth. Mind you, this arrived less than a month ago and I did decide to put it into a normal sized pot. It's in a net pot so I can give it a trellis right away so I don't have to worry about it. 
and you know it's already pushing a new growth so we will have an opportunity to, to trellis it early on now whether we will take that opportunity i don't know hopefully future miro will not just forget this exists and he will trellis it early on i also changed my mix and you can see that it's not because my mix was bad there were other reasons and i will talk about that at the end of this if i don't forget let's just make that note talk about okay moving on this hoya i also had a very difficult time rooting i was really worried that it will just die similar to hoya lucky this is hoya multiflora sv406 I did want that specific clone of Multiflora. I don't mind the others, and I actually hope to get other Multifloras, but this one has a particularly beautiful flower. It is also in the No Drainage Cup in Cocoa Peat and Perlite, and you can see that some of the leaves are a bit yellow, and honestly, this one did not want to root for me until I put it in my propagation box, which is on a heat mat. It's just a plastic box with see-through lid on top it actually started to push out new roots it doesn't have a lot of them uh i'm not going to disturb them now but it's going to be okay it's it will just need some time to rehydrate this leaf is looking great still you know eventually it will be a nice plant it arrived really really well it did not mind the shipping it's just that in the process of rooting it did lose some of the firmness and we do have a couple of slightly yellowish leaves but that's fine it will push out new growth the important thing is to get it to root i heard that it can take up to two months to root hoya multiflora which i can confirm it takes a long time it didn't take two months but you know it did have a help of the heat mat so if you're rooting hoya multiflora i think you know just place it right away in a humidity box and put a heat mat on the bottom and I think it should root really well. I did keep it in water for three or four days, but that wasn't really working. It already started to dehydrate, so I just decided to go ahead and root it in a traditional way that people recommend for rooting Hoya multiflora. The next Hoya also has a very sexy leaves. It is Hoya rinsi from Borneo, and you can see it has this one big leaf here with a bit of splash it is dark green it's not as dark as it appears in the video it's slightly lighter than that but it is very wonderful and it does have new growth here it's very 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 tiny it's a whisper of a growth but it's doing really well i rooted this one also in uh, distilled water and no issue rooting hopefully it will grow really fast because i cannot wait to see more of these leaves honestly in real life they look wonderful this next hoya is hoya ben vergarai and it's doing really well i do see touch of new growth let's not call it a whisper anymore you can see how it looks like it got a trellis right away because I noticed that the new growth is activating right away. So you know, I just wanted to make sure there is something for it to climb on. Admittingly, the trellis is not too big, so we will probably need to fix that. It's also in the net pot. It's doing really well, rooted really fast. Wonderful Hoya to have. The leaves do have a very nice veining on them. I'm not sure if the camera will pick up the veining on the leaf so i cannot wait to see how the new growth will look like because you know sometimes hoyas make these leaves that are oddly shaped you know what can we do about them we love them despite of that but they are capable also of producing very lovely leaves and this is hoya soligamiana orange the leaves again <laughs> difficult to pot uh they have this nervature that looks very attractive when there is no reflection on the leaf what can i say i mean if you can do a better job potting the cuttings <laughs> you should then come and pot them for me this one is a bit sun stressed there so i can imagine it gets really beautiful under the light it still is not pushing out new growth 
this one does make very beautiful orange flowers and I also got it because of the leaves because they can get really really nice under more light but I think you know I was just choosing it for the flowers I'm I love orange flowers and the flowers in this one are especially cute. The next Hua is something that I already kinda have. It is a clone of Hua Sigilatis. This clone was collected by Natalie Simonson and it is Hua Sigilatis NS07039. So it is Hua collected in 2007 by Natalie. And I'm gonna find it. It does look similar to Hoya Sigillatis, but, um, I mean, it is Hoya Sigillatis, but the leaves on this clone are shorter. They do still have that purplish back. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. The purplish back on the leaf, but the shape is slightly different. They are shorter, pointier, and there is no splash or not as much splash on the leaf. The reason I decided to get this one is because it gets pink flowers and they look really, really cute. My Sigillatis didn't bloom yet, but I cannot wait for that to happen, of course, but I'm also looking forward to seeing the pink flowers on this one. I love Hoya Sigillatis anyway, so I thought, why not get this one? There are a couple of other clones that I would like to get, but let's just start with one. I'm excited about the next one. It is something that I also really, really love. It is Hoya Mapegera, and it's one of those thinner leaved Hoyas, but it has lovely splash on the leaves. You can see the cutting here. It's very, very nice. I think it looks already great. I don't have many thin leaved Hoyas, so I thought I would try with this one. And honestly, the flower is so cute. Looks like a tiny ghost and I cannot wait to see that. I don't think it will happen soon, but anyways, I think the leaves are just decorative enough with this splash and they're dark green. So when you look at them in person, the splash is just really noticeable. It really pops out. The next Hoya is a cross between Elliptica and Darwini. It is Hoya Patricia. Come here, Patricia. Patricia started to make new growth already, which doesn't really surprise me because Hoya Elliptica is a really fast grower and it produced a bunch of roots. It was super easy to root in water. I think you can see some of them there. Mira, why do you have a face? You can see some of the roots there. It is in semi-hydro because Elliptica for me wants a bit more water and it's sometimes a bit difficult to keep it hydrated in bark and moss. Not because the mix is bad, it's just because my watering habits are. So I decided just to go ahead with semi-hydro and I can already tell you the leaves are much firmer than when it arrived. Honestly, Elliptica has nicer leaves. I don't think they're stopping Elliptica there, but they're very similar. Uh, you can kind of see the similar nervature, but it doesn't pop as much as it does with Elliptica. Still, the flowers are very, very attractive, and I just loved how fast Elliptica grows, so I just wanted to get something similar, and I hear that Hoya Darwini is not the best grower, so I thought maybe a cross would be good for the beginning, and you know, when we gain more courage from the cross, then we will move on to Hoya Darwini, hopefully, if I don't kill this one. This next Hoya is something very, very special, and I know I say this for almost each one, I get it, I'm obsessed with Hoyas, but honestly, this leaf is something completely different. I never had a Hoya with a leaf like this, or I think among all of my plants, this is probably the most unique leaf. It is Hoya Ruthie, and the leaves to me feel like leather, so they feel like suede. They're also very decorative with, with splash and they're matte, but as you can see, they are bendable, but also firm at the same time. It's very interesting. I, I really like the way they feel. I, I have to tell you, I sometimes just touch them like this. <laughs> oh, poor Hoya. I don't see any new growth, but it was very easy to root see. I cannot stop. It's it's 
don't get it. Don't get this one because then you will just be touching the leaves all the time. It's really, really, really special. Much prettier in, in person than on camera. I try to take photos of it. I try to record it several times. As you know, this is my third time recording the video, but none, nothing does it the justice as seeing it in person. So if you can get your hands on it, really do, do. You will not be disappointed. This next Hoya is Hoya Species VL9. It's another small leaved Hoya and I'm just gonna take it out of the cover pot. It is in cocoa peat and perlite pinned down. It did start to root. It was a bit slower than the rest of them. So it can get a very, very nice splash on the leaves, but I really got it because of the flowers and because of the, you know, it's so cute, the size of the leaves. I really am starting to love these small leaved Hoyas. I don't know if it's because they don't take up so much space or that they're actually infinitely cute when you see them in person and you're like, oh my God, that's the best. Or maybe it's like when they flower, it's amazing when you see, sometimes you know the flowers can be bigger than the leaves. It's absolutely wonderful because, you know, with Hoya latifolia, for example, you get these huge, huge leaves and the flowers are so small compared to that. And it's kind of not disappointing, but it's like you could really, you know, you could have done a bit more. You know, so many leaves, so many big leaves and such tiny flowers. But some of these small leaved Hoyas l look really, really much better to me with flowers than uh, some of the big ones do. Anyways, enough of the rambling, it's time to move on to the next one, which is Hoya Hanye Purple. Hanye, Hanye, I always want to say Hanye. For some reason I think the second H is silent, probably not. Anyways, Hanye Purple, which will probably look pink to me when it blooms, but it's fine. They say it's Hoya Hanye Purple, I'm gonna call it purple. And it's this Hoya Rabbit. So that's Hoya Hachni Purple. Okay, so the water evaporated and I didn't really notice. So I actually decided to pot it in this mix of cocoa peat and perlite. And I checked yesterday and it is rooting. You know, if I tug on it, I can definitely feel that there are roots. And I did dig around a bit and it rooted really, really fast. It only took a couple of days for it to root in this mix. And before that, it was in water for two weeks. Well, it wasn't in water for some of that time because it evaporated. And don't tell me that didn't happen to you. Water evaporates and sometimes you don't see, you don't notice if you have 30 Hoyas rooting. Happens. So anyways, I decided to pot it right away and it's doing really well. It did arrive with these yellow flecks. I'm not sure if you can see. So it probably didn't love the shipping, but it's doing really well now. The battery is getting empty. It's okay, I have another one. Probably screaming, no, he has more. <laughs> I have four. I'm gonna hold you hostage. And I'm back by popular demand. Can Beyonce sue me for saying that? Probably. This is Hoya Lacunosa SV403, and this is the Hoya that I mentioned before. It looks darker to me than Croniana. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to hold up both of them. <laughs> probably not. This is probably this is probably a very bad idea. Yep. Nope. Not a good idea. Different tactic. Will that work? Not really. So you can see this one here is Croniana with black leaves, and this one here is Lacunosa SV403. I'm not sure if you can see, but in real life, definitely the Lacunosa is darker. It has darker leaf. I'm not imagining that. Nope, not imagining. If you really want something with very dark leaves, maybe look for Lacunosa SV403 instead of Croniana Black. Another thing that might happen in the future is that they may clump Lacunosa and Croniana into one species, Lacunosa. Still ongoing debate about that. 
I am going to keep them separate for now, but just bear in mind that in the future, maybe you will have to change the tech for your Cronianus. What I forgot to mention is Lacunosa SV403 was a gift from Camilla, so thank you very much. And the next one is also a gift from Camilla. It's a very generous cutting of a cross she made. It's Hoya Sunrise, and I do have to read the number. It's Hoya Sunrise CSG 18. 023. It is a cross made by Camilla Sjohom Getting, so that's the CSG. I'm probably mispronouncing her last name, and it's a cross made in 2018. I have to tell you, it looks wonderful. I'm trying to find it, that's why my head keeps shifting. Basically, it is Hoya Sunrise, but with more lacunosa shaped leaves. You can see it's a very, very generous, very big cutting. I love how these leaves look like in person. Super easy to root. They are light green, not lime green, but very, very light green. And I do think they will blush up really nicely under the light, but I'm mostly impressed with the shape. It's like Lacunosa and steroids. Those were 26 Hoyas that I got from Sweden. Now let's move on to some others that I got. These couple Hoyas arrived, I think a week ago or so. First one is Hoa Ilagiorum. We're just gonna need a more time to locate that. It did not have the best time in shipping. Some of the leaves got damaged, but it rooted really quickly. Honestly, in two or three days, I was able to see roots. So I decided to pot it when I was potting the rest of them because they do adjust really well. And you can see that, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show you, I'm not sure if you can see there, but the roots are definitely growing in semi-hydro. So, you know, I saw Whisper of the Roots, put it in semi-hydro, it's doing really well. I cannot wait for new growth because, again, these old leaves, not a big fan of them. It does have wonderful red flower, again, red flowers, I love red flowers, I love pink flowers, I like orange flowers. I think I'm starting to like all the colors of the flowers, so... That's why I got Hoya Ilagiorum. The next one also arrived with Hoya Ilagiorum, but it, again, it did not have the best time in shipping. It is Hoya Mac Gillibri. And it is a small cutting of Hoya Mac Gillibri with a very short stem. I just put the cutting in cocoa peat and in perlite, and it rooted really quickly, actually. It's already plumping up. I don't know how this will grow. I did not have a lot of faith in it, but it really surprised me. So a very tiny Hoya Mac Gillivray. Another Hoya arrived with these two, but that one was rotten on arrival. I tried to save it, but it, it just didn't work. It was Hoya Pobi Corolla HSI037. Don't worry, I did not count it into the list. So despite of that one dying, I still have 39 that are doing really well. And I have the 10 in the bag which are with no ID. I also got three Hoyas for my birthday from a Hoya friend here. And the first one is Hoya Finlay Sony Nova. You can see here that this one has quite a bit of splash on the leaves. It looks nothing like the Nova that I got from Sweden. Really, they are not even similar. The leaves on this one are thinner with more splash, and the veining isn't so visible. These leaves, rocks falling out. These leaves are thicker, they are very, very green, no splash on them, and with very visible veining. The leaf is also much larger. When I look up Hoya Finlay Sony Nova, both photos show up on internet. I really don't know what happened there, but I'm gonna keep the tags as they are. When I have time, I will probably try to contact someone about Hoya Finlay Sony Nova to find out more about them. I don't think they're the same clone. I don't think this one just developed more splash because the leaf is also much, much, much thinner. And there's just so much difference between these two that I don't think it can be the same plant. Another Hoya that I got for my birthday is this cutting of Hoya Fusco Marginata. It's a small leaf for now, but it will grow. It rooted really fast, so I could pot it already. It's also in semi-hydro. And 
it doesn't have that characteristic leaf yet, so we will wait for new growth to see. Fusco Marginata was on my wish list for a long time, and for some reason when I'm ordering Hoyas, I always decide not to buy it. I don't know why. It never really makes the cut, but I have been wanting this one for a long time, so I'm glad I finally have it. I don't know if you can see that. I also got this tiny cutting of Hoya Mirabilis. It still didn't root. So I think I'm gonna do with this one the same thing like I did with Hoya MacGillivray. I'm gonna use one of those tiny plastic cups, put some Coco Peat and Perlite, and get it inside of my propagation box, and then I think it should root really fast. We do have a bit of yellowing here, but that's, that's fine. We just need to get it to root and it will do great. Hopefully. I'm very optimistic about these Hoyas. The next two arrived from Croatia five days ago, I think. And it's, again, it, the first one is a big leafed Hoya. I know, I know. It is Hoya Balaensis. I see that the roots are activating. I did forget to add algamic in the water, I just didn't have the time. But I can see along the stem that the roots are activating, so I'm probably just gonna leave it as is. And the next one is Hoya Chloranta, and that one actually, you can see, there are roots forming there. It's another nice cutting. I also got Hoya Cipitagensis. It is another small-leaved Hoya. Very similar to Lacunosa, the way that the leaves look, and the flower is similar but with a red center. And there is also debate about Hoya Cipitagensis and Hoya Waliniana. It seems that a lot of Hoya Walinianas out there are actually Cipitagensis. It seems that true Hoya Waliniana is much more of a rare plant. Maybe in the future I will explore that, but I'm not really sure how to do it because I don't really have Hoya Waliniana. And if it's as rare as they say it is, it's gonna cost a lot of money to get, so I don't think I'm gonna do it. The variegated Hoya Waliniana, it's probably a Sipitagensis. There is just a big chance that it is Sipitagensis. However, don't change your tags yet. Wait for it to bloom and then try to ask someone who is knowledgeable. Usually people in Hoya Identification Group know. May, April, she has a website that I will link down below. She will talk on her website about Hoya Sipitagensis and Hoya Waliniana and, you know, if you want to ID it, maybe you can take really good photos of the flower and ask in Hoya Identification Group. Now we will move on to the next one, which is Hoya Rebecca. I got this from my friend as a cutting. It's doing really well. It's super cute. It's a small cutting that is in Leka. Again, I'm sure that some of the rocks will fall out when I do this. I am really getting into Lacunosa and Obscura and anything in between, so I really love that I got Hoya Rebecca. And it's such a tiny, tiny Hoya. The leaves are very small. I'm not sure how much larger they will get, but if they remain this size, then oh my goodness, it's so cute. So it is a cross with Lacunosa and Obscura, but it's much smaller than, for example, Hoya Sunrise. The leaves are much smaller. I do have 10 no ID Hoyas in this bag. I'm pretty sure one of them is Hoya Mathilde, and I'm sure that one of them is a Verticillata type. There are some Pubicalyxes here, some Carnosas, but I really don't know. The lady who sent me these lost the tags. She says they are all different and that not all of them are Carnosas to me. Most of them look like Carnosas, I have to tell you, but you know, I can see actually that more of them are putting out roots. Who knew this would be a viable way to root Hoyas, to just put them in a bag? We're just gonna really deal with that later. I have two more Hoyas to show you that I got from the same lady here. First one is Hoya species Tam Dao, and I think this is really a clone of Hoya fungi or something very, very similar to Hoya fungi. I do have to admit that the reason I wanted this Hoya is because it has very big leaves and they look very, very nice. The back is not pubescent like Hoya fungi. It is a bit dehydrated, it arrived like that, but it is starting to root. Maybe it's unnamed species still, maybe now it, this is fungi. 
I don't really know. I'm glad to have it and I'm very thankful. It looks, the leaves look better to me than hoa fungi. Some people keep hoas on the dry side, so that's a bit of an issue when you're trying to root them because when you cut them and they're already dehydrated, that just, it's not, you know, it's not the best. I mentioned this Hoya in overpriced Hoya video and it is a Carnosa type Hoya. It is Hoya Carnosa Grey Ghost. I did not pay for this Hoya, it, I got it in a trade and I did not have to trade arm and a leg for it. I just, I think I traded uh, Sigillatis, Obscura, Subquinto Plenervis and a couple of other hoys, but I also got Species Tam Dao. So it was a good trade, and this lady is actually selling these, or was selling these for 20, 10 or 15 euros, I'm not sure. It's very dehydrated, but I can assure you it is Hoya Carnosa Grey Ghost. There is silver on it, which may not come out in the camera. To be quite honest with you, it's less silvery in real life than I thought it would be, but it's definitely there, definitely there. Now that I have it, I don't know what the fuss is all about. There are more expensive silver Carnosas. There is Nova Ghost, which I'm not sure, is it reverted Argentia Princess? I can still hear it. I can still hear the sound. Honestly, it's not the 90s. I lost my train of thought. My train of thought crashed. Anyways, Hoya Carnosa, Grey Ghost. There is Nova Ghost, which is, I think, reverted Hoya Carnosa Argentia Princess. I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong. It's reverted something Argentia. It's very expensive. I don't think it's worth the money. Seeing this in person, I don't think this is worth the money either. It may push out new growth that is prettier, but it's, to me, still a Carnosa. I'm just trying to see if I will like it. Honestly, I got it so I could see what the fuss is about, so I could show it on the channel. We will see how it grows. I will tell you more opinions about it, but, you know, so far, I'm very unimpressed. The same way I'm unimpressed, by those people playing the music. Those are all the Hoyas, no more. I hope I didn't skip any of them. I may have, hopefully not. Now, the reason that I changed the mix, honestly, I'm out of sphagnum moss and I cannot get it at this time. I have to import sphagnum moss and at this time it's not simply possible. Places are out of sphagnum moss or at least out of good quality sphagnum moss. And I just decided to move ahead and use mix of cocoa peat, perlite, lava rocks, some river rocks, and I'm not even sure, I think I put some bark in there. The Hoyas seem to like it, they don't seem to mind. It is well-draining and aerated mix, so I think it should work well. We will see. So far, everything seems okay, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of leaned more towards semi-hydro, because I know that works well for me, and I wasn't really sure about this new mix, but I really had to pot them in something. Why I was actually gone? Well, I painted the room again. It got painted in October, there were painters here, there was mold before when the walls were pink. Not because they were pink, but there was just mold. It happens that this room is naturally with high humidity and adding 300 plants or 400 or how many, I don't know, it doesn't help. Even with dehumidifier, the humidity stays very high, so there was mold. There was mold before, but it's just intensified, so I had painters last fall, and they were supposed to remove it, and they didn't. They painted over it, despite saying that they removed it, and you know, three months later there was mold everywhere again, so this time I decided to do it myself. There wasn't a huge amount of mold, it is something that you can handle yourself, but I had to remove it and use paint with anti-mold thing in it, I'm not sure what it is. In my head this process was supposed to take a day, it didn't, it took several days, and I also wanted to paint my Ivar shelf. That's not the color that I wanted, I was going for a grayish green, but for some reason I typed in how to get 
mint green. The video, it was good. That is really mint green. It's just not the color that I wanted. Nevertheless, it looks good. And as you can see, I moved some stuff around. All my shelves are next to the window. They got, they are on the wheels now. So that's where Hoyas will live. Orchids got moved. Everything basically got moved. And if you are following me on Instagram, you probably saw that some of my Hoyas got mealybugs. I actually noticed this on Hoya Undulata and a couple of others. And I had to treat all of them. Some of them I'm rerouting again. I think I have about 20 or 30 cuttings of my own hoys that are rooting. Some of them had to get cut in three or four pieces because they were just too long to root as one. That's happening as well. Some of them got treated and put back into a new mix. And they were very easy actually to remove from the net pots and the sphagnum moss wasn't difficult to remove. What was difficult is the old moss, the cheap moss that I was using, that turned gray and nasty and very difficult to remove but the good quality moss, moss wasn't. Unfortunately, when I was doing this, I also followed some advice from the internet, not the fault of the internet, it's my own fault that I didn't test this. And by following this advice, I burned some of the leaves. I will talk about this sometime in the future. I cannot promise it's the next video, but it's very important to know not to do this. I do have several videos to get out. I will talk about my Mars Hydro tent. That is, I think, maybe next video or the video after that. We'll see. The tent is no longer in the room, but the light is up there. It's currently off because of the video. Overall, a good experience, but I will talk about it more. Unfortunately, I will not be able to make a very good comparison because of the mealybugs. Uh, some of the hoas had to be cut back, and because of the treatment, some of them are going through a setback. They lost some of the leaves, but... I can still talk about some non-Hoya plants that I put there that are doing really, really well, some alocasias. So that will be an interesting video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below which Hoya is your favorite. I think Hoya Hirschkiliana variegated is one of my favorites as well as Hoya Ruthie. I hope you're having a wonderful day and don't worry, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm alive, I'm not dead. I'm not sick, <laughs> everything is well, it's just that there were so many things going on and a lot of them had to do with plants. So that's all from me for today and yeah, hope you're well, see you soon, bye! Why is it that every time I record a video, the 90s are coming back, the trucks are passing by, the motors are passing by, people shouting into a speakerphone or megaphone, whatever, they're passing by as well selling stuff or buying stuff. I think the apocalypse will probably happen one time when I record a video. Are you done? He's done. Okay. Why are you pressing the siren on your car? <gasps> Losing my mind. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. Double the shout out for my $5 patron, Elena Coddington. Thank you so much, you are awesome. And also a big thank you to my other $5 patrons, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Dinsla, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Mary, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nerdy Kathy, Spinach Key, Kanya, Tom Ibatosson, Vicky Dingler, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Becca Panyard, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Friet Ian Ask, Jerry's Garden, Caro Cactus, Caro Cactus? I'm not sure, Caro Cactus. I don't know how to pronounce some of these, obviously. Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlov, and thank you to my $1 patron, Hasenta. Thank you so much for supporting me, and thank you so much for waiting all this time for the video. I really appreciate it. It's been messy, it's been hectic, but sometimes that happens when you have so many plants and, you know, things, life, I don't know. It's the, it, it was a strange month. Hopefully that's over. I'm not sure it is. <laughs> but thank you so much for your support. I hope you are all having a wonderful day and I will see you also very soon. And yeah, just thanks everyone, I guess. I think there comes a time where you say so many thank yous that it's becoming ridiculous. And I think I've reached that limit. So it's probably a very good moment to end the video. And try to transfer it. Another fun thing that happened today, my dongle stopped working. 
So I have no idea how this is gonna get into my computer because literally USB-C still didn't happen, Apple. And thank you so much for providing a computer with only USB-C. Great week again. I think peanut butter is gonna make it better. Peanut butter makes a lot of things better. Rambling.